200 years of star-spangled history is the theme when Al Hartley puts his patriotic pen to paper. It's the 700 Club. With Ben Kinchlow, Danuta Soderman, and host Pat Robertson. Well, thank you and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this edition of the 700 Club. Al Hartley's here with us, the uh, man who worked on the Archie comic strips. And uh, we're going to talk to you about why the comics aren't funny anymore. And to somebody who was named after Veronica in the Archie comics, here is Danuta along with Ben. <laughs> yeah, it was Danuta Patricia Veronica. I just love those comic books. But also on the show, an incredible story of a woman who could not start the healing of her disease-ridden body until she received a vision of hell. Ben? We also have a story today of a wife who battled for eight years were the husband's logic. But right now, this in the news. Well, huh? since you cracked open a comic book, you'd probably be very surprised at what can be found in them now. I, as a matter of fact, have a few here with me. And uh, there's one called Magic Comic Books. There's a, a girl who has a satanic tail floating over a pentagram on the cover of this one. Uh, there's another one here that is called The Eternals. The Night of the Demons, and uh, that is the subject there. Here is one called X-Man, X God Loves, Man Kills. Well, the man, interesting enough, happens to be a Christian minister who kills these subhuman creatures. Let's take a look as John Adams gives us a fuller report over the tremendous revival of the old comic books but not with standbys like Superman and Little Lulu. New superheroes and sexual innuendos and heavy reliance on spiritual forces. Here's John. Adolescent teenagers, they are bombarded with numerous types of entertainment that heavily impact their lives, including popular role-playing games and rock music. This group is also among those that have turned on to the comic books, which have seen a surge in popularity over the past few years. So much so that the industry has an estimated annual intake of $100 million. And anyway, my comic book heroes won't let me down. Comic book heroes! But those comic book heroes have evolved from the Superman and Batman types to, in many cases, strange-looking characters who are sometimes less than human. And these comics, in some cases, introduce much of the youth to the occult. They see some of their favorite characters drawing their power from demonic forces and getting their protection from very identifiable occultic sources like pentagrams and light circles. They are able to astral project, that is, leave their body via a higher spiritual level. I'm concerned about the influences on our young people. Samuel Gray is the president of Christian Service Brigade, which puts out its own publications. As a parent and as a Christian educator, I'm concerned when I look at the images that come from these printed pages about what young people are being given, about the kinds of images that are set before them and the kind of behavior. Because what I read here is not uh, typical uh, American life. It's full of fantasy. It's full of, of uh, monsters and evil. It's full of superstition. And it's the sort of thing that uh, one's mind and emotions can run to if given free reign. As, as far as comics being harmful, I'm not personally aware of, of, of an example of a comic inciting someone to commit a crime, abuse a child, abuse a wife, but you may be able to come up with something like that. I think there have been some horrible, ugly things done in comics that turn my stomach, but I don't know if those incite a crime any more than an ugly movie or a terribly violent book uh, would do the same. 
Dennis Kitchen is publisher and editor of Kitchen Sink Comics, which puts out several books. Some of his company's products appeal to small segments of society, like these underground books, which he says are really a thing of the past. But it isn't these types of blatantly sexual comics, clearly disclaimed for adults only, that bother people like Gray, as much as the more subtle examples of exploitation in the popular comics read by the young. Some like this example of two teen titan heroes in bed together. Bob Greenberger, associate editor with DC Comics, publisher of the Teen Titans, says the company received a great deal of criticism from that one frame, so much so that that type of innuendo is now forbidden. But the comics go beyond the occult and the sex. Many Christians are concerned with correlations made with the Bible, some very distorted in their view. For example, look at this cover, remembering that it was Jesus who called James and John the sons of thunder. The comic character Thor is called the God of Thunder. The Bible refers to only one God who has the power over thunder, including the power to speak like thunder. Also in Thor, a villain is quoted, though the stars themselves should die, I am. In the book of Matthew, Jesus talked about the stars falling from the sky. Jesus also referred to himself in scripture as the only one identified as I am. Some comics claim those with supernatural powers can create forms of life. The Bible, in the Apostle Paul's letter to the Colossians, and in the Gospel of John, states the Lord created all things. Perhaps nothing is more obvious as what's found in this comic book where a girl with a Russian name claims to have been a consort to the devil and now is the means to humanity's salvation or its eternal damnation. Without a doubt, the most popular comic book series right now is the X-Men. It's published by Marvel Comics, located in the building behind me here in downtown Manhattan. The X-Men are subhuman beings with supernatural powers bent on destroying evil. In this particular issue, God Love, Man Kills, the X-Men, of course, are the heroes, the villain, a Christian evangelist. An evangelist felt he was called by God to destroy mutants like the X-Men, including the leader of the superheroes, whom he crucified, while quoting scripture, of course. In the end, the evangelist was shot, and the X-Men and their leader lived through the ordeal. Marvel Comics, which wouldn't grant CBN News an on-camera interview, called comics and important print media kids are very receptive to. However, they said when it comes to religion, they consider themselves neutral. Meanwhile, DC Comics' Greenberger, who says he feels most comics are spiritually uplifting, also told us a large number of the comic writers are, quote, very liberal and use the chance to poke fun at evangelicals who they feel are bending religious teachings the wrong way. And so it's placing before them the kinds of behavior and images which are um, at the very uh, best, they're unusual. And at the very worst, they're certainly uh, strongly negative and they're portraying the kinds of things that uh, I think uh, it can only have a degrading influence on the, on the moral life and development of young people. Despite that, the industry says it is selling the public what it wants. The company's rising profits, the comic book comeback, would seem to confirm that. The question that has many troubled, and the industry's answer unsure, if this is what they want now, what could they possibly want in the future? John Adams, CBN News, New York. Thank you very much. I was just reading this edition of this X-Man, and here is what it says um, in this point, and uh, if he looks up, he is not this evil incarnate, and then he says, in awe and wonder, he looks up to behold a man. Now, you recall the statement in the gospel, echo homo, behold the man, which had to do with Jesus. And here, there's a shaft of light, and he looks up to behold a man. 
the, the, the very, uh, they've taken scripture and twisted it totally with a crucifixion image and so forth. And here is, the, is, a, is a crucifixion going on of one of these uh, uh, subhumans. And out of this guy's chest is coming another person uh, who we're not quite sure is he's hanging on a cross and here he is bathed in light. You tell me that's not blasphemous. And not only, but this is being sold to your children. You shouldn't, I don't know what you shouldn't. You know, shouldn't let them read it? Well, you should certainly, if it's your money you're giving them, I don't think there should be some at least parental guidance in this thing. This is bad news. Mm. It really is bad news. They're using this medium to, to pervert the Christian gospel in a very, very uh, strange way and use terms like that, you know, echo homo. Everybody knows what that means, behold the man, and that's what it says. I mean, they've used that very word, that very phrase. It's not unlike what's going on in music today. I mean, this seems to be mm. a trend with the comic books, as well as uh, some of the, the more outrageous rock and roll. They all seem to be barreling down the same path. It's, it's either a, a, a on the part of some to, to, to desecrate the sacred things and therefore break free from God. And this is a human tendency just to take everything they've learned, whether they're Catholics, whether they're Episcopalians, whether they're Protestants of some nature, to, to, to defile these images of the past and these kids are trying to break free. It's either that or it is a clear satanic thing to, to, you know, to come against Jesus. You remember this question of deep darkness? A book like this is deep darkness, but it's being sold by the millions to impressionable kids. Ben, you used to probably read comic books. I did. Uh, yeah, well, I what, grew, grew up on comic books, yeah. huh? The Lone Ranger and Superman and uh, Batman and all those. But you know, the, the comic books have changed dramatically, and I think what happens is we still have the innocent, the concept of innocence in comic books that we had when we were growing up. For example, Spider-Man and Batman, you know. Batman I grew up with, and Spider-Man is a relatively new uh, mm -hmm. hero. Well, someone sent my, my little boy some huge uh, life-size posters. Well, they weren't posters, they were cutouts. You know, yeah. you, you just, it was the figures All themselves. Right. And so we put them on his wall, you know, in his room, and nobody paid any attention to it, because I'm, you know, really like that. But when we put those things on his wall, you know, my kid, you begin to complain of nightmares. You'd come in and say, you know, Dad, I had this horrible nightmare. And we'd wake up in the middle of the night and we'd go in there and pray with him and send him back to bed. And this thing just went on for a while. Finally, we had a program like this on the 700 Club where we talked about dolls and images. And I thought, well, that's what's in my son's room. So I went back home. And even when I did, Pat, I laid on my son's bed where he, where he sleeps. And I looked up at these huge figures and there they were, oh. glowering over them like yeah. that, and I got real panicky, man. <laughs> so I reached up there and snatched them dudes off the wall. And do you know, from the time I took all that stuff off his wall and destroyed them completely, my son mm. has never had another nightmare, mm. single one. Well, not only nightmares, but also sexual fantasy. A kid 11 or 12 years old, and, and many of the women in these things, I mean, they are naked or near naked. They've got these scantily, uh, uh, well, here's one right here, for instance, if I could get another cut up. This lady has got little or nothing on. I mean, she is, I mean, there she is. So some 10-year-old is going to look at that picture and look at it and look at it. And, I mean, that, there's no question that that uh, has an arousal tendency. And he doesn't quite know what he's doing, but he can fa start fantasizing on these, on these women. We you know, what else, on. Is, you what? know what else is new? You know how much this comic book costs? $5.95. Oh, come, it used to be a dime for Superman. <laughs> it's five ninety-five, and uh, Superman ought to go on strike. I mean, he didn't get paid <laughs> enough. We, we're going to see Al Hartley and take a look at Yankee Doodle, a new one coming up right after this message. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> What a cartoon artist has been putting his pen to paper since the end of World War II, I believe it is. Cheryl Chisholm gives us a close-up look at artist Al Hartley. It's a spellbinding journey for any age. All it takes is a free minute or two, and the memories come flooding back. The art of cartooning has been with us a long time. And although a highly specialized craft, our media-oriented society has made cartooning somewhat of a science. When dealing with full-length comic books, it's mandatory to lock into key elements that will grab a comic book reader's attention. Uh, you don't want anything static in a comic. 
You want something to grab people. So action is very important. Uh, humor is important to tickle the funny bone. But mostly, it's the visual effect of lots of excitement. Because most people pick up a comic book to be entertained. And it cannot be placid or static. It has to be visually exciting. Award-winning cartoonist Al Hartley has been working in the craft since 1946. He started out working with Marvel comic books on such characters as Spider-Man and the Hulk and delighted readers for many years with the Archie comic book series. When Al made a personal commitment to Jesus Christ some 18 years ago, it didn't take long for his new faith to spill over into his work. The interesting thing is that he found that as he committed himself to daily prayer and Bible study, his production capability amazingly doubled. And it wasn't long before he decided to make a career move to work with Ravel, a Christian comic book enterprise. With a target audience ranging from 5 to 18 years of age, Ravel Comics has sold over 30 million copies of Christian comic books. And now CBN has decided to join Ravel in sponsoring Al Hartley's latest creation, the Yankee Doodle comic book series. As with all his work, Al says the idea for the series came while on his knees. But the work for such a project has gone through many stages before being published. First, the rough drawings. Then a complete script. Next, the finished black and white copy, and finally, a color-coded reduction to the actual size of the comic book. It's been a fulfilling venture for Al, and the prayer and hard work have finally paid off. I want to teach young children in this exciting way through the Yankee Doodle comic, in the sovereignty of God, that God does indeed rule in the affairs of men, and that the people who founded our country came here to live that kind of a life. Our documents, our constitution, all of the public record, and the quotes of our great leaders all point to the fact that they believed in God. And it wasn't a God of last resort. It was a God of first resort. Well, let's go talk to Al Hartley right now and find out about Yankee Doodle and what's going to happen. And Al, it's so nice that you can come and be with us. You are, who is that? <laughs> well, this is Yankee Doodle. That guy. is Yankee. How did you come up with this character? You have drawn Archie. How many years were you working on Archie? I worked on Archie for 18 years, Pat. 18? 18 well, years. Well, now, you didn't create Archie. You picked up. He was already That's in right. the I progress. took over the feature about a month after I became a Christian. Archie yeah. actually was created back in about 40 years ago. Danuta, I asked you just before we, we came out here about who your favorite character was on the strip. Who was it? Mr. Weatherby. Mr. Weatherby. Yeah, he, Why? He makes me laugh the most. Yeah. Oh, he's such a humorous character. He's sort of a symbol of authority that can't cut the mustard. And there are a lot yeah. of people like that around, you know. So. <laughs> I know how it is. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you, what's happened to comics? I mean, in the old days, they were comics. I mean, comics meant you laughed. They were funny. And we called yeah. them the funny pages. And everybody's yeah. going to read the funnies. Yeah. This stuff isn't funny they're doing. No, it isn't funny, it, particularly if you're a parent or a grandparent. It's tragic. And uh, a young person picks up a magazine, they want to be entertained. Mm -hmm. And to have these subtle, insidious messages in, uh, put as part of the content is a destructive situation. And uh, this is precisely what's going on in terms of morals and lifestyles. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I don't think it's so subtle. Some of it's just about as blatant as you can that's get. Right. I mean, yeah. these are Satan's, this is Satan's daughter and things like that. Let me ask you back again about this Yankee Doodle. This type of thing, how, how do you feel about it? Can, can, can we turn the tide with something like this, mm -hmm. you think? Well, I think these are exciting days we're living in, Pat. Mm -hmm. And I'm very enthused about Yankee Doodle because I think we're, we're seeing in America a returning to our roots and to recognize that we have a Christian heritage mm -hmm. that hasn't been emphasized or actually has been diluted by the educational process. Oh, yeah. Matter of fact, people are just trying to rewrite history. And, exactly. And you're going back. Who thought of Yankee Doodle? Is, is, is this stuff you've been working on for a number of years? Well, I've been thinking about doing something mainly from the standpoint of seeing, Pat, that young people have been shortchanged. Mm -hmm. And we've seen young people through the educational process and through a great deal of the media being told that America has no future, that America uh, has a poor record of uh, all kinds of performance, 
And I'm tr I think, first of all, young people should feel good about their country, and they should recognize the special, unique quality of life we have here mm -hmm. that is based on our freedom, and that that freedom comes from Almighty God. It looks like that is the message that the young people are picking up. I mean, in, in these polls, they are responding to that. I mean, somehow they know instinctively that that's the truth. Yeah, yeah. they seem to be on the cutting edge. Uh, of, uh, a, a, a comic like this, now, uh, how many copies will go out? What, what, can, what can be done to get this out into people's hands? Because we, we at CBN are working with, with Yankee Doodle, and this is the special partner's edition of Yankee yes, Doodle. Yes, yes. Well, in, in addition to what you're doing in terms of the distribution, Pat, it will be available in all Christian bookstores. It'll be available in all special rack jobbing operations, mm -hmm. uh, supermarkets, restaurants, airport uh, terminal buildings, this type thing. And I think there's a very strong possibility that they're going to be made available to every single student in Christian schools in America. Tremendous. Well, now, this is, this is not, I mean, Yankee Doodle, one, two, three, I mean, this is an ongoing series, or this is the only one right here? That's the only one now. That's the, that's the initial series, which uh -huh. is the Spirit of Liberty. It deals with the Revolutionary War period and the, uh, the basic story of why people were willing to pledge their life, their honor, and, and their fortunes. And the next book, which I've already written, is mm -hmm. entitled Yankee Doodle. Mm -hmm. the uh, spirit of the frontier. Oh, great. And so you can take them through the frontier, the War of 1812, and, and, and yeah. whatever. I we mean, the can, Constitution, everything. Yeah. We'll go everywhere yeah. around the country and perhaps to the moon. There's no, the sky's the limit, Pat. Fantastic. Al, I appreciate you and what you're doing. And I, I, ladies and gentlemen, this will be available for you. It's out right now, isn't it? Yes, uh, it is on right. the stands now. Okay, Pat. so this is uh, whatever it is. The prices are ungodly, but this thing's, what, 65 cents? That's 79. <laughs> 79 cents. Well, it's not, it's, 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 it's a little bit better than that $5 number that Danuta was talking about. But uh, Al Hartley, ladies and gentlemen, on a new comic book called Yankee Doodle. Ben, what do you have next? Pat, we've got an ounce today. Um.